Stephen, just keep your... Well, just a little surprise in that mm. I can understand you've got to operate within the structure as mm. it's set up, which is why I'm saying, are there areas of, of information you're not receiving? And we can look at why it was set up in that way. But as the Chair said, um, I'd rather sort of look forward. But just come... Well, and, and as part of that, firstly, what, what appetite is there to revise the structure? Because to me, it, the complexity of the structure and the complexity of the, compl uh, the contract negotiation uh, goes to the heart of the issue. And as you just alluded there, you've got people from the train operating companies as members of Network Rail. Network Rail is providing the infrastructure improvements that this report focuses on, and yet any improvements before it can start work, it has to go and negotiate with 15 or so ro rail companies on the rolling stock. So, so you, there's clearly conflicts of interest in, in the structure as it is. And what I'm trying to understand is the impression you're giving the committee is, is no, actually, you have got, broadly speaking, the data you need. I think the inter certainly from the regulator point of view and our focus on the infrastructure manager, there is a high degree of, of knowledge and exposure to what the data is and we get lots of information and we are reporting regularly uh, quarter by quarter on Network Rail's performance against the settlement and annually against its financial performance as well. I think you're right that there are the, the, this whole industry is quite complex and there are issues around value for money which is why we we were very happy to be joint sponsors with the DFT of the, the value from, Rail Value for Money study that's currently been, been, being uh, endless and, that, and that is I mean, actually going to look at all the areas on this and I think that one of the things that we've told it and I think that, that colleagues in DFT were very happy was that there should be no no gray areas in this sure. and how, in fact that, we should, and that includes network rail structure if it come if it if there is a better structure for network rail right. but mainly I think it's it is getting network rail to work closely with its partners to find solutions <coughs> better solutions to uh, what the travelling public That's and people I mean, who it's want to It's more for the department, really, to see in terms of what appetite there is to uh, look at the structure. But can you just tell us how many consultations has your uh, body uh, commissioned in the last three years? I can't give you. I, could, I, could, I, could, I can can't give you. It, it must be in the, the, the 20s, 30s, 40s, but I can't give you a precise I mean, number. I was trying to work it out. It looked like we had 21 last year and 35 in 08, but mm. I mean, I don't know if that's the more. But it just, it just struck me, just looking at your website, I mean, there's this whole long list of different consultations, policy frameworks, investment frameworks. Yes. The whole thing just is so complex. And there must be loads of people producing these reports, appraising these reports, you know, having meetings on these reports, which is money that could be going to build longer platforms and, and other things. So, I mean, how much do you spend on consultants a year? Not a great deal. I haven't got... Uh, it, it, but you must know. We You're do know. We do know how much we, we, we do know. Out of our budget, out, out of our, our budget of around 30 million, it, it, it is uh, it's around four to five million on consultants. Right. It's just... I mean, as Matt Hancock was referring to, a supermarket, one of the first things it would be doing would be looking at it, the cost of its suppliers, trying to yes. drive down its, its costs, uh, cutting out fat at head office. And none of that seems to be happening here. We have, as a regulator in the last five years, progressively reduced our, our revenues, and we have, uh, as part and parcel at the end of last year, uh, begin reduce the size of the ORR quite substantially. We are, we are cutting back, but we have... How many people work for the regulator? 309. Okay. Well, just it depends a little bit on full-time equivalents. And, uh, but I've got to bring back network rail, our infrastructure costs.